very much. Uh, thank you guys. Good evening. Thank you for coming to the meetup and thanks Dan for allowing us to host this prestigious meetup at Badu. My name is Satish Govineni. I am a mobile QA automation lead at Badu. Today I am going to talk about a simple and interesting topic, uh, integration of Cucumber with Appium. So anybody is doing the same thing, uh, using the Cucumber with Appium? Yeah. Anyone use it? Could you please raise your hands? Oh, yeah. yeah, very good. So before I go into the slides, I want to talk a little bit about Badu, <coughs> what is actually Badu. So Badu is a social networking service where you can find the people based on your location and interest. We have 243 million registered users in 190 countries. We have the two amazing applications. The first one is called Badu itself, which it is released uh, almost five years ago. And we have uh, 50 million plus downloads in Android already, and in the iOS we are close to the figure. We also have the another application called Hot or Not, which we released a year ago, which is quite popular in American countries. And we are getting the one more called Bumble from the Badu. We support the four mobile platforms, the both applications, uh, Android, iOS, HTML5 and Windows Phone. Uh, all the applications are the native applications. And we have uh, 200 employees in the company, both in London and Moscow office. So that is more or less about Badu. If you have any questions, want to ask me about Badu, you can talk. You can talk to me after that. And as usual, we are looking. The company is growing mainly after I joined Badu. Uh, the quality of the application went very high, and the company grew continuously. So we are looking for the good people to join with Badu. There are the various positions available in across all the roles and also we have in the manual QA and automation QA. You can find them in the court.badu.com. So that is about Badu. Coming to the slides, uh, Cucumber and BDD with Appium. So what is Cucumber? Can anyone say what is Cucumber? Yeah? Anyone? It's a fruit. It's, <laughs> it's a fruit. <laughs> it's a fruit, yes, of course. Or vegetable? Vegetable, yes. No, in terms of operation. <laughs> yeah, no. so it's, it's a cartoon language. So, Cucumber is a Ruby based BDD framework uh, which supports the BDD style of working. So, what is BDD? It's called behavior driven development. It's almost similar to test-driven development, but inherited from TDD. So what BDD says is that you drive the application development based on the behavior of the application. So if you want to develop a particular feature, you uh, first create the how you want the application behaves, and you develop the things one after the other. So how it matters for us, the automation. <coughs> the cool thing is that whether you do them in the BDD style of development or not, but as an automation tester, it will let you write the test cases in a plain language. There are the three keywords, uh, given, when, and then, is popular from BDD. So you write the test cases using these the words, and you can write the test cases in plain language. So this is the sample, the test case, what Cucumber can understand. It's called Gelfin syntax. So if you want to write a test case for a particular feature, you start with the feature tag on the top level and you mention that what is the feature you are going to write the test specification and then you divide them into the various scenarios. Uh, scenario is, is again the syntax and then you write with the given when then. Like given I have something, when I do something, then I, I see something. So yeah. But actually these words are doesn't have any technical significance. They are the only words for you to the better rate. But once you start writing the test cases, I mean, I always never pay too much attention of these words. I always used to write, uh, read the step definitions. But Cucumber doesn't allow you to run your test cases by itself on the application. It doesn't have the intelligence of 
running the test cases on any platform or any application. What it does is that it will allow you to integrate with the other tools where you can execute on the on the platform or application. For example, for, uh, for the web applications, you can integrate with Selenium, and for the mobile platforms, you can use the, of course, the Appium, right? So this is what I'm going to talk about, like, how do you integrate with Appium? So the first thing is the requirements. I'm not going to talk about the requirements from the beginning, because we already covered this in our previous talks that the basic uh, setting of the Appium requirements for the Android and iOS platforms. You need to install the Appium, of course, and you need the Xcode with command line tools for the iOS and the Android SDK, and that you make your devices debuggable to run the automation test case. So all the basic require all the requirements we need it for the with Appium to automate the applications for these platforms is still applicable, and you need them, right? But what else on top of it is required that you need to set up the Cucumber stuff, which is actually a very simple, simple thing to do. Once you get all the IPM things, uh, to set up the Cucumber, you need the installation of the Ruby, because the set Cucumber is the Ruby based framework. One way of doing it is doing the gem install uh, directly. So Ruby is actually all the tools developed on the Ruby are actually a jump file uh, which will be stored in the Ruby jump repository. So if you want to use any tool, you need to do jump install particular version. So to do that, you need the Ruby version and it's better to do with the Ruby version management tool, RVM. Why it's, uh, it's, why it's, uh, it's good to do that is because the gems uh, developed in Ruby, sometimes it doesn't support the, uh, the the Ruby version what you have in your system. So you need to, if you have the multiple Ruby projects and you are using the multiple gems, uh, then you need to keep switching between the Ruby versions when you are working on the different projects. So Ruby RBMs will give you the nice way of switching between the Ruby versions. And I think we also have the Ruby ENV or which does the same same things. So once you get the Ruby, the second thing is the recommended way of installing the Cucumber gems is through the bundler. What is bundler is, uh, what is bundler? Anybody using bundler? Yeah. Yeah. Ruby applications, yes. So it's an uh, elegant way of uh, maintaining the, your gem, uh, the gem files for your particular project, the, the project what you are working on it. Uh, because once you started having multiple projects, you may end up with installing the different versions of the gem into the, your system and then sometimes it will be very hard to, it's very hard to debug like what's going wrong with that thing. So, to avoid this one, you can use the bundler. What you should do is that you create a jump file in your project tool directory and you mention the jump package managers. I mean, what you are going to use it. So for Cucumbers, to set up the Cucumber with Appium, you need the Cucumber version, which we are using the 1.3.19. And we have the Appium library, which is providing by the I think the bootstrap uh, person is developing the Appium library. His name is Matt. His name is Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I forget his last name. But yeah. His name. yeah, so he developed the, the Appium library. I think the most of he's the most responsible guy. So this <coughs> will give you the, the client library for the Ruby to interact with the Appium. And it is also called Appium console where you can do the debugging your code uh, in the console. It's very quite very useful. Uh, so you mentioned these jumps is minimum requirement uh, for your jump file, and once you created them, you can just do the bundle install in the root directory, which will install the, all the jumps. So generally, this uh, each jump file is uh, again dependent on the various jumps. So bundle will take care of. I mean, this actually jump will take care of installing all the dependent jumps along with this file, along with these jumps. So that's a, that's a simple uh, setup for the Cucumber, what we need for the project. So next thing is the 
doing the atom configuration in the project. To do that, just to explain the project structure of the cucumber, actually you can you can easily do like you can easily configure the way you want in the your cucumber project. But this is the simple structure. What you do is uh, has a three folder, which is the features, the root folder in the, your project, which contains the all the the features uh, you write for the in the uh, for the test specifications. So always like Cucumber supports uh, only supports the files and report features. And then we have the features support directory where you do the your atom configurations and the and then the step definitions. This is the place we actually implement the steps you mentioned in the features. So we already discussed about the feature, like how it looks like. Now I'm going to talk about the, how we do when you do that in configuration in the support directory. So first thing is basic thing is the appium.txt file that you need it uh, to mention that where you want to run your test cases. So you create the appium.txt file. Uh, you mention the things, the capabilities you need it for the appium. So I took the mobile web example which we are running on the simulator. So the platform name is iOS, the device name is simulator, the version 7.1, and the browser name is Safari. So once you keep this appium text file in the support directory, what you need to do is load this uh, the file into the the project. So you write this code into the environment file. So in in the Ruby, the env.rb file is the main environment, uh, main uh, the first executable file. So whenever you run a Cucumber project, it will look for the env.rb file and start executing it. So the best, one of the best place is to keep your um, loading the appium text file uh, you mentioned in the support directory and create the appium driver from it. So what it does in the Ruby is that it creates the a global variable called driver. It's actually created also inside the Appium driver code, but I just assigned uh, to the same variable for the clarity. So the the, the dollar symbol, what it has uh, in the DOM, is actually the what it means is uh, it's a global variable in the Ruby. So you can access this variable anywhere in your project. So you created the driver with all the capabilities. The next thing is uh, installing the. The next thing is to start the driver, right? So general the test cycle where uh, the general test cycle is that you start the test session in the beginning of your project, uh, in the beginning of your test case, and then you run the test case and then you stop the session. Of course, right? Yeah, you do the same. Sorry, I'm asking question. Do you do the same, like starting the test session and run the test? Session? <coughs> so in the Cucumber, we do. In the Cucumber, they have the hooks. It's called the before and after hooks, which is applicable <coughs> for all the test cases you written in the project. It's a global. So in the before hook, you start. You have this driver variable. So you start the driver, which actually sends the request to the Appium, and the Appium create the that opens the browser to the Chrome driver or the Safari driver on the device and it will give you access to the web driver which actually I'm assigning to the browser variable and then you can do also get the home the URL you can get uh, you can get you can op uh, open the home page on the on the browser uh, so and then you can start running the test case and after that you have the author book you can put it in the, in the same file in the nv.rb file like quitting the driver after the test case is implemented. So this is the simple way of doing it. Load the Appium driver, start the Appium session in the before book, and uh, stopping the session once you run the test case. So Cucumber is also has another books where you, you want to do something with uh, after doing the specific step, or some of the scenarios where you tagged as, you make a special tag, and you can say that, I want to done extra things after the after this uh, when the scenarios which has this special tag. Right. So the next thing is implementation of the step definitions. 
So from the hooks, you got the browser variable where you got, it's like a web driver where you can get access to the mobile browser. The simplest way of implementing the step definitions is implement using this browser variable. You can get the access to the your locators and you can do all the regular stuff. Right. So these are the things. So in the my first step is that given I am on a Gunia home page. This is actually the the this is one of the source lab, um, um, the URL which I am using for the example. So in the given I am on Gunia home page, I am checking the, whether the, the first home page is loaded. So I am checking the title is there. And then there are the steps like I want to enter the email field and uh, enter the comments field. So you can do this in the step definitions. But the, there are the, there is a better approach. and. One of the approach is using the page object model. You might have already heard about this one. This is actually what is the page object model is that you create the class for the each screen and you per, you write the all the operations you want to perform it on the on the particular page. Uh, so all the code we written in step definitions will be moved to the the class. So for example, enter email and comment. I move to the my class. So so every you make the every screen you represent a specific class and you have all the interactions to that screen, you put it in the in this in this class, which is called the page object, which is called a page. Once you've done this one, if you so then it makes the step definitions very simple. So you don't have any code specific to the the application or the platform. It's more the test logic what you want to write on the irrespective of the platform. You only write the test logics uh, what you want to do it in the step. And there are like the so there are the multiple uh, in Ruby we have uh, several gems which are implemented by using the page object model. You can still use those gems in the with your classes. So once you implement the step definitions. The next thing is running the test cases. So you do the you you run the test cases with Cucumber. The basic command is is called uh, is a Cucumber itself is a command line tool. What it does is it find the all the features you written in the project. It will start running the all the test cases. But if you want to write a single test case, it has a called tags. There's a feature called tags where you can tag each scenario with the scenario what you want to test. You can tag it as as you want. For example, I make my scenario tag it as a progress, and you can run the cucumber minus tier progress. So it will only run the test cases which tag it as a progress. If you don't want to use the tags, you can also use the feature with the number, um, which will run the specific test case available on the line. And other thing I want to say that it, Cucumber has a very, very, I mean, there are the good reports you can produce using the Cucumber. And one of the reports is the HTML report. So you can say what output format you want, for example, HTML, and you can say what is the file where I want to write. So, like HTML, you have the JSON reports, you have the XML reports, and Pretty, uh, there's also called Pretty. So you can use. Uh, you can see the Cucumber command has uh, several, uh, the way you want to run the test cases, you want to give the reports. And that is about it, right? and I want to show the demo, which is actually what I prepared for the for this presentation. I hope it went okay. <laughs> so what I am going to do is I am running on my Jelly Motion emulator. I have written the test is here. So this is my project structure. I created the pages here. I put all my linear page uh, things. And the step definitions I have in the steps.rb files. And this is my environment.rb files where I wrote the IPM capabilities. And there is a before and after books. I also put the after step hook. I'm waiting for the slip because when I'm running the test cases, it's getting very fast. 
So I put the slip for every step I'm performing it. And this is Guinea of um, Pick Drop feature, which I took the one of the examples uh, we have in the uh, Appium uh, sample code. So let me run, hopefully it works. So I'm already, I think I already started the Appium. Yeah. Here I started the Appium. Um, I'm running the test because I'm running run before it. So. so I'm running with the Cucumber. So it's six doesn't work. That's the problem. <laughs> so <coughs> I had this same problem. This is problem with the Jenny motion. So let me restart it. But what happens is I have to stop the appium as well. As you see, problems with uh, Jenny motion. So So I have to kill the session, which I haven't done it, so I kill the Appium and start the Appium server and I'm running it again. Let me start with any motion again because it's a problem with any motion. Sometimes doesn't ADB doesn't allow. Anyone using any motion? We are using for the development but when we integrated with the CSI where we found that it's um, it's not quite good. So. All right, so now we find the device. I want to tell you how we automated it in Hadoop. 
So you can guess that that we are using the cucumber uh, to do the automation, and we are using the Appium for the all the platforms, Android, iOS, and mobile web, because Appium supports this platform. <coughs> And I'm here. I'm talking about the cucumber, but actually we haven't done the same. Why we haven't done is uh, so we started the automation two years ago, much before than two years. Ago. And when we saw this, uh, when we are investigating that what the tools we want to use, so we have the two options: Calabash and the Appium. So by the time Appium was not that much stable, and we started. Um, Doing the automation on Android and iOS using the different tools. Uh, we're using the Robotium, and in the in in iOS we're using the Kif or Frank or didn't remember it. So what we see is that the the most of the code what we are writing on the both platforms is the, exactly the same. The business logic is almost same. What we are only changing is the the interaction with the applications is uh, is different because. The, our applications are almost have the same behavior in all the different platforms. So we want to do the, we want to try the cross-platform test automation. And by that then, Calabash has this uh, methodology of that we can do the cross-platform automation for the both Android and iOS platforms. And uh, actually, that was the reason why we end up with using Cucumber also because we actually didn't think about the BDD or Cucumber stuff. So we started Calabash, and Calabash needs the Cucumber, so we started doing that. And then uh, in the six months ago, we want to do the mobile web automation. We decided that because the number of users two years ago is very uh, minimal, I think, in the mobile web, mainly in the HTML5, but then the, the number of users are growing, so we want to do automation <coughs> in the mobile web also. And then we find that Calabash doesn't support. So we want to find out that. Um, want to do that automation like in the mobile web and we started investigating the tools and we found the two two approaches one approach using the native drivers supporting the web platforms for example chrome driver uh, for android chrome and the safari driver and also but we thought the but then we found that appium which doing already doing the same thing and has the keeping the all the drivers what we are using under the hood is supporting the Appium. So we thought that it's a wise uh, way of going with the Appium. So what we did is that we integrated the Appium for mobile web in the same project. To give them more clarity and what we have done is actually we are using the same features and the step definitions we prepared for the Android and the iOS platforms and we implement the page object model for the each platform. So before we have the Android and iOS pages which are running on the Calabash and now we are prepared, we are writing the mobile web pages and uh, doing on the Appium. So the gap what we have here is actually we want to fill with uh, fill for Windows. We want to find a similar kind of tool uh, for the Windows and we want to fill this gap. And the Key API is actually one of the, our internal tool. Uh, works for the uh, with interaction with the server. So the lot of things because our our the value applications, the, our all user flows is depend upon the data. So through the key API, we set up the data into the our development environment and we run the test cases. So by doing this one, when we started implementing the mobile web, we are actually getting the fifty percent of the reusable code. Um, by using the features and step definition. Actually, from the beginning, we keep the both Android and iOS pages are very lightweight. The most of the business logic, we keep them in the step definitions. So when we started doing the, uh, integrating with, uh, for the mobile web with Appium, so we find it's very easy way of doing it. We are just writing the, the interaction with the browser and the mobile web page and making sure that the features and step definitions are working. Sorry. Yeah. Quick yeah. question. Um, I was just looking at the uh, driver, the uh, step definitions. Yeah. So you've got an Android page and an iOS page. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the methods in your step definitions are yeah. you working for both the Android page and the iOS page? Um, because I want to be thinking like, how do those methods um, 
the accessibility ID for your yes, Android so, app and iOS app might be different. Yes. So how did you actually handle that? So so we have the separate pages for the both platforms. So in the strength definitions, we always call the functions on the page. On the page, for example, if you want to do at page dot enter email and you give the email number, email ID. So in the Android page, you will find the locator of the um, in the, based on the Android, you find the locator of the um, you find the Android locator and you send the keywords, you send the email. And for iOS, it's a di completely different locator, and you write the same function. So you always implement the same function in all these three platforms. So that makes the step definitions work for all the platforms. But you have the page objects in a different categorically different things, right? Because then you say find by iOS yeah. and find by Android kind of thing. Yes. 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 So what are the common things? You have a parent object, okay. yeah. parent page, parent yeah. object. Yeah. So for iOS implementation, you have categorical implementation. Yes. And yeah. for this, you have this one. So we have that weird demarcation of things. Yes, yes. So, I mean, to tell about the what Calabas have done is that they created the base classes for Android and iOS. A base and uh, A base is for Android base, and for iOS, it's called iBase. So it has the basic functions like. Um, uh, waiting for the element when you are using the when you creating the function uh, creating the class, and then it will give you the utility functions of checking like a check element exists, get element, uh, click on element, the touch operations, which will keep you even your page code keep separate from the platform code. So what we done in um, Badu is we created called mbase for the mobile web and we integrated with Appium. That's why we are keeping the I mean. So we made in the same structure what we are using for the both Android and iOS. So that is uh, about how we are automating at Badu. So next thing is why you end of my slides. Uh, why we want to use the cucumber. So before I using the cucumber, uh, we using the I started automating Java using the robot him for Android. Um, what I see the advantages of with the Cucumber is that you always keep the separating of your test cases from the implementation. Uh, maybe you may be doing the same thing, but what I feel the convenient is that whenever the feature is getting developed in the platform, in the actual feature development, <coughs> you can start writing the test cases from the day one. You can create all the, the test specifications, like what you want to automate it. And then you can implement along with the when the play and the things are going on. And the other thing is that you can engage with other people. So I'm not sure that if you write in the code on just pure Java code or any other code, it may be difficult for the other people uh, who doesn't know the how the automation things work. But when you have the features, any person can read. The product owners or the people who are manually testing your application. They can understand that what things are automated, what is not automated. So it's always keep the things, uh, keep the things like executable specifications. And we also, what we see in the, our experience, for example, in Badu is that when we are changing the application, the behavior, we have the, we always when the the new when the people start designing the new product specifications based on the existing previous applications. Because the people are keep changing, so sometimes they miss the, some of the features, and we always find the things which are missing on the new product documents. Because we have the test cases which are running on the application. This is what I, I, I see the advantage, and I believe that you can implement the cross-platform test automation easily with uh, if you using the Cucumber. Uh, because when we start uh, automating for Android and iOS platforms, we never really thought about the mobile web and Windows. We are always focused on the, these two platforms because they are the most revenue generated uh, to, uh, platforms. But when we want to do the mobile web, we feel it's very easy to integrate for the mobile web. And I'm sure that if you find the right tool for the Windows, we can do the same, uh, same level of the integration. Coming to my last slides, Cucumber. Um, so Cucumber is a Ruby-based tool, but it also supports the other platforms. 
so this is I took from the cooks.info, so they have the codes for each language. For Java, it's called the Cucumber JVM, I believe. And it has the tools for the .NET, PHP, Python. So the, the language is supporting by the Appium. You know, it's almost like Puma is also supporting. So you can use the whatever language you want to automate, but you can use the Cucumber with Appium. And these are the references I got uh, during the documentation. Cooks.info, you can see that what is Cook more about the Cucumber, Appium, and the RVM for the Ruby version management. There the GitHub and the Appium sample codes, we have all the samples for the Android, iOS and mobile web platforms. That is end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and you can ask me any questions. Will it support scenario outline? Sorry? Scenario outline, does it support? Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> Uh, we manually start the app. Yeah. What it does is that what are the capabilities you need? <coughs> For example, you want to run whether an Android or iOS. So when you so this actually start the browser. So when you put in the before book, when you say start driver, it will uh, send you the your car, uh, it will send the request to the Appium, and the Appium based on the uh, the, uh, the desired capability is what you already sent to the Appium. It will then create the browser session on the on the actual device, and then it will send you to the uh, the web driver. So every time when you're running the test case, it will quit the browser and restart the browser for every test case. Not the app, yeah. Not this. Um, not the starting and stopping app. So you need to. So in the hours, in like in the when we integrated with the CS server, so we start the app much before we start running the cooking butter cases. As a question, sorry. So yes. Yeah. <coughs> How well? So do you run your test cases in parallel? Uh, we haven't done yet. But we just got the point that we can do the parallel in the Cucumber. In the, sorry, in the Android. Uh, there is a Cucumber jump file, someone uh, written, who can distribute your test cases. But actually, it is uh, distributing based on the features, uh, like it's uh, every folder. So, what we are uh, implementing right now is that so Cucumber has a dry run option where it will give you all the test cases. So we are doing the dry run, got all the test cases, and then based on the number of devices we connected, uh, we will uh, execute the each cucumber command and giving the device, uh, like giving the each feature. So we want to get the distributed, like giving to the each test case. So I think we're using Java. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned the browser, yeah, browser, that it's a global variable. Yes. So yes. you just start running the test cases in parallel. Any global variable. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so you, I mean, if you want to do the parallel, so you should do out of the cucumber. You can do it. Right. So you start the, I mean, you do the dry run also as a like some shell script, and then run the cucumber command with uh, different uh, the uh, uh, with different I P M. So we need to start the different I P M, and we should start the cucumber with the different post -mates. So it's just uh, on top of the cookie, but not inside the project. I think we can't do that. You can yeah. tag it. Yeah. Sorry? If you tag different features with the yeah. you have different ports. Yes, yes. And then you have one say running with iOS, one running with your... Yes, but actually, like if you do it in Java, this uh, spoon plugin is very, very nice actually. So you don't need to do anything. Just give the project, it will distribute the test cases into all the Connect a device and give you the report at the back. So we are trying to do achieve the same thing with the cucumber. We want to. We are starting with Android. We almost uh, got there. Once we done this, one we publish the jump file. Sorry, one question. Why are you not using build kind of things? So to take time parallels. Yeah, uh, that is we want to do for Appium and for mobile web because the, the, the 
Android and iOS, we are using the Calibre, so it doesn't work with the Selenium grid kind of thing. Okay. For the mobile web, maybe I hear that with Selenium grid, you can start them different yes. IPM sessions yes. and you can run the test case. Yes. With the test case. Yeah. But with Calibre, also there is an option to explore that. Oh, okay. You can pass that to a grid. Oh, okay. Yeah, the grid can take care of doing that. Oh, okay. I don't remember exactly the law. It's given all the solutions of the Okay. But all the things you can only do with Android. But if you go once you go with iOS, it's uh, the parallelization, I think it's impossible. Only with the grid. You can have, again, the example of using this, it's lots of Mac minis with yeah. the device. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Yes. Grid, right? yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah, you can't run multiple instances of these streets. I mean, many people have tried. It is possible. It's so sad. It's so sad. But our, uh, uh, our not here, but our relationship engineering guy, he did some investigation. So we can do, we can use the Mac Pro. Uh, Mac Pro is a, or uh, there's a, like, you know, the cylinder kind of Mac version. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so you can make the multiple VMs on this Mac hardware. Uh, and no, don't do it. Why? So it's not it's it's legal. Legal. It's legal. Yeah, yeah. we thought it was illegal, but it's illegal. No, no, no. It so wasn't that it was illegal. We had it on a Mac Pro with five VMs. Oh. It was all going through uh, one virtualized port or something, and it was really slow. Uh, so okay. I handed it the Mac Pro and she said, look, just give me five Mac Minis. It's so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, nice. we, we have the Mac Minis. Like, we have 12 Mac Minis for our continuous integration, and each Mac Mini connected to one Android device and uh, one iOS device. And we are running the distributing the you know, making the reuse them for both Android and iOS builds. But we want to move forward, so we thought that it's good to use with the Mac Pro. But we've been there, we stepped away from this. It's quite expensive. Yeah, it's yeah. like seven seven thousand grand. Yeah, the, the software stuff. Yeah, um, it's, we almost actually send the purchase order, so I don't know. We probably should talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe I think we should talk to you about experience. Well, thank you. Any questions? There was something from Carol and Jim on the Pink 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 Yes. Running. And Speed, if I'm not mistaken, was web, though. I don't know whether it's going to work with mobile. Uh, which one? Squeeze? Uh, squeed or something. Squeed. I can't remember now, but my head was two years ago. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think the parallel gem, what we are looking, uh, looking at the moment, but what Parallel Gem is doing is that um, it's actually, actually doing quite good, but you're taking based on it's doing based on the folders. Yeah. And uh, the way we organize uh, the folders based on the features, and uh, some of the features we have a uh, huge, uh, a lot number of test cases. So when we put the multiple devices, one a, uh, one device is taking long time to finish because it's oh, have yeah. that feature, uh, that feature directly. The others are finishing uh, much before. So we want to do the distributed kind of. Uh, are you track them as uh, at long or at slow? Yeah. Like that. Then you put all the slow it somewhere. Or, you know. Or I mean, it's not the particular scenario, but it's actually the particular folder is taking. Oh, so that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We are actually trying to improve the same job, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Um, how do you organize steps definition? I mean. Uh, all in class, several class, every step is, uh, is uh, in a separate, separate class. And if you do that, how do you share values? Uh, how do we share? So, in the step definitions, it accepts the member variables. You know, it's actually all the step definitions or the functions in a word class. Just classes, and you can share the member variables between the data. So we use we use the some places we use the member variables we want to share the data. Okay. But most of the data we deal with the server, so we store the data into the server and then read it in the next place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in this definition, uh, you have at page and then you call the member name yeah. value. So let's say you have a class in, for example, like a login. The yeah. How do you set, like, let's say if I want to automate the budget registration, yeah. how do you call the page? So say at page, how yeah. do you say, do you just call it at registration page, you yeah. got the method and the value, right? So I will show you. So we have two pages, Guinea Pig, Guinea Pig and Guinea Pig 2, right? So when we want to transition between the pages. 
So how the transition is happened is Because in Calabash, you can just call the page, the page object one name, a registered page, and qualify it. Yeah. And then the yeah, name. you can do the same. Yeah, same thing. Oh, okay. yeah. So when we do the click the link, it is actually going to the next page. So we are creating the 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 next uh, uh, class here and creating calling the dot .await. So so in the step definition. So in the step definitions. What we do is that when we call this step, we are doing the updating the page variable at page equal to. Straight down, but it's we call at page equal to at page dot click link button, which will get up your page will get updated. But, but you are saying that you are creating. We have different classes and like, for example, different like page object model. So you have one page object model. Sign in, login, sorry, yeah. and then the other one is registration. So, yeah. how would you call uh, basically the object in the step definition? <coughs> uh, so, we call only the functions, but the transition is will handle in the uh, oh, step okay. definition. So, so, whenever you call the click link on the particular class, it will also give you the next page what it will get loaded. If it's not loaded, then it will the test case itself fail in the same step. Oh, okay. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, do you, do you have like a, like an operation file where you have sometimes have to do double click, um, scroll down, scroll up? Yeah. Is that same in Akin as well? Um, Akin? I think we also have some gestures uh, support in the app here. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, actually Android and iOS, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's okay. the same issue. Right? It's the same thing. Okay. Um, Thank you. Oh, you have Alan as a question. Yeah. Uh, are you doing anything special to set up tests later? Um, we all, um, we have this, uh, the QAPI implemented by the server team. So if you want to do something, like I want to create a user with so-and-so uh, kudos, so and so so and so we have a API account function, we call that to the, to the QAPI. And that goes, how does that get, where does that go? Right. So we have the development, uh, so it goes to the our server. Uh, and then it will create the and uh, everything data into the database and can give you give you the with the log username and password. Then I do it. So most of the things we handle with the create. If anything we need it, we create the request and then do. All right. Um, Thank you very well, much. Well, there's a few parting announcements and then a surprise at the end on the corner. Uh, but let's thank Satish for. Housekeeping houses that I'll bring out our special guest.